Good morning. I'm sure a lot of you are on a lot of pages right now. Scrolling through the morning services. But the good thing is you can always come back and see this one. I'm going to start to invite some people on. And I would like you all to do the same. Start to invite some people on. Excuse me as I reach across. And do this. Boom. 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 I hope everybody's okay. You see, I got the Rocky thing planned. Ah. Uh, because we're warriors. We're conquerors. Hallelujah. Good to see you all got up this morning. And you decided to worship the Lord with me. Uh, bear with me because, again, I think I need five hands to do everything that I, I want to do here. Uh, you got to help me out. Got to help me out, y'all. Got a favorite blood song that you like? A hymn? Something like similar to that? Yeah. Favorite blood song. Think about it. I'm still, I'm still inviting. I'm sorry. You all could help me. I won't have to go through all these names. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, and I'll figure it out. I'll have to Google it sometime. Yes. Hey, I feel like a champion this morning. Hallelujah! I feel like a champion. You all don't know the death tried to hold me in the bed this morning. Tried to keep me from my mission. Keep me from my purpose. But as I stand here today, I bless God. Yes. Yes, I feel like I can win. How many feel like winners today? I come on here to just tell you just that. You're a winner. You're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's probably a funny picture that you're seeing on that side while I'm inviting people. Okay, I think that's enough. Because you, you all are going to help me. Hi there. Hey. Hey. I feel like a, a super uh, superwoman. I've been watching too many Marvel flicks. <laughs> Yes, hallelujah. I thought I'd get up this morning and not just do church casual. That I would act like I'm in a place where I would be this morning in the house of God. And uh, I'm just inviting more people on. I think there's a, a space down at the bottom of your, your screen that says invite. So, so invite some people. This is Pastor Overseer Frida Thorpe of RDK Westland, Pennsylvania, broadcasting live from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hallelujah. Woo! Don't you feel like fighting on that? Like, oh, it's time to get up. Yeah. Get up. Get excited. Yes. It's resurrection morning. He's giving us one more time to get up. Hallelujah. Let's pray. You know, I don't wait a whole long time for people to get on because they're going to get on or they're not going to get on. But you can always see this again later. Hit like, please, and share. Or go to that bottom button that says to invite somebody. Do a watch party this morning. Two or three are gathered together. I see two or three. I see y'all. Hello. People are saying hello. How are you doing? Yes. How are you doing, everyone? Good to see you. Good resurrection morning. And now I'm a little funny about saying Easter. I, I want people to know. No, we commemorate this day because Jesus got up. Huh, with all power in his hands. He got up. Ooh, I feel the rocky spirit, y'all. 
I better turn that music down so I can get through what I'm getting through here. Because I got a word from the Lord for you. Yes, I do. Do anybody have a, a blood song? What's your favorite blood song? Just type it in there. Good morning there, Minister David Stubbs from Solid Rock Foundation Ministries. Yes. Michelle, how you doing? Thank you for inviting some people in for me. Net Wade family. I love to see y'all. Somebody may need this. You may not need this. Maybe you got it all together, but somebody else may need this. Come on. Invite. Yes, because I'm excited. Go tell somebody Pastor Frida is excited. Yes, I'm excited. Hallelujah. I got up this morning. All right. So, while you're inviting, let's pray. God, we thank you for this resurrection morning. We thank you, Lord God, that death could not hold us down this morning, Lord God. Somewhere in our, our spirit, somewhere in our physical body, we heard your voice this morning and was able to rise up. Lord God, no matter what we were buried in last night, no matter what we went through yesterday or last week, we're here and you raised us up. Thank you for raising us up out of all, out of the pit. Thank you for raising us up out of poverty. Thank you for raising us up, oh God, out of depression. Thank you for raising us up out of sickness. Thank you for raising us up out of anxiety. Thank you for raising us up from dead situations. Thank you for raising us up, oh God. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did. But you did. But you did. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, all, y'all, but he did. How many know that? We didn't deserve for him to do it. But yet and still, yeah, woo, I'm going to have to turn that off because I'll be ready to, like, fight. Woo! <laughs> yes, okay, I'm sorry. I'm in. How you doing there, Trevor? Good to see you there this morning. Sister Renee Miller, good to see you this morning. Amen. Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. <laughs> Woo, God is good. I'm happy. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> If you don't know what's going to come out of my mouth this morning, so I'm just glad to be here. But I do have a word for you. Um, we're going to turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to give you a minute to turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I'll be in the, like that spirit the whole time. I'll be like, woo! <laughs> yeah, hold on there. Don't go away. I'm right here. All right, I'm back. Anybody got a blood song, a favorite blood song that you need to, um, that you always like to listen to uh, on uh, this, this, you know, I really wanted to get up at six and do a sunrise service, but uh, <laughs> I slept right past that. Good morning, Eva, good morning. Uh, but but any, any hymn, uh, we could start out with one little hymn uh, let me see. Uh, uh, we did at the cross last week. How about because um, uh, I don't have all the words to everything, but I'm a I'm a blood song. Let, well, let's do at the cross. At the cross, okay. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart. Rolled away. Mm -hmm. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. And I, I think I ain't gonna go no further with that because I already feel like the enemy trying to crunch my throat. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the one that you were talking about. But yeah, I love, uh, uh, he lives just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I can't do it. Because I know he holds the future 
My life is worth the living just because he lives. I do better when I'm just sitting in my car or in a shower. <laughs> but I just wanted to include some of those. Okay, here we go. Revelations chapter 1. And I want you all in your leisure time, uh, because I know, yes, Deanna, woo! God gave his son. <laughs> they called him Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going on. Um, Revelations chapter 1. We're in church, y'all. Tell your kids, sit up and pay attention. Uh, there's no excuse <laughs> this morning. Put them on the couch beside you. Pretend like you're at the church pew. You can have a cup of coffee, but sit up and pay attention because the Lord is speaking. How many need a word in this season? I do. I'm over here. Oh, 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 God, I'm over here, and I need a word from you. Okay, chapter one. I'm going to skip all the way down to... Let's say verse 17. I wish I had a reader here today. And it said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as was dead, one dead. And he laid his right hand upon me saying, fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. Uh, and I was dead and behold, I am alive forever. And I have the keys of death and life. And, the, and of Hades. Write therefore these things which thou seest, and the things which are, and the things which shall come to pass hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks are seven churches. One day I'll get on and I'll do my uh, series, Which Church Are You? And we'll talk about the seven churches in Revelation. But this morning, I go back to my Rocky theme. Da -dum -dum, da -dum -dum. Okay. So I don't know how I'm going to work this thing here. I think I'm going to just bring it right here in front of me so that I could really talk to y'all up front. How many know that, I think this is April 11th, say a shout out to my nephew who had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Perry Lamont. Um, hi, hi, Miss Jen. How are you, Pastor? I'm honored that you're on here. Uh, this is the season, really, when we would... How many sports fans are out there? Yeah, we got a lot of sports fans who are jonesing because everything has been... came to a stop. Everything has shut down. The things that we normally would be watching right now is in the sports world is gone. But I'm going to help you a little bit. I'm going to allow you to go back into... Just say, for instance... We were just done with March Madness, and we were going into the championship, the final four, and the championship. And so I want to bring that to your, your, your attention. Um, we know that the year 2020 championships were canceled, and it, let, it, was, it disappointed a lot of people. Let me tell you something. When the NBA said they were shutting down, and then the college you know, said they were shutting down, it was like then people really took it seriously. <laughs> they begin to take it really seriously what is going on here in the world. And I hope you're paying attention and you are heeding to God's voice right now. But uh, let me take you back to Final Four 2019. Uh, the four that played was Auburn, uh, which was the number five seed. Virginia Tech was, uh, Virginia was number one seed, just Virginia. Uh, Texas Tech was the number three seed, and Michigan State was the number two seed. And all of those were in the final four of March Madness. Some of you watched it. Some of you can recall some of the, the, the things be, uh, concerning that game because Virginia came out as the champion with 85 to 77 against Texas Tech. And today I want to talk to you about the final four and the keys to final destination, which is your championship. So through the process of elimination, are you on there? Are you paying attention? Sit up, pay attention, share. Good morning, Lori. Share with somebody, uh, hit like, and let's go forward. Uh, through the process of elimination, teams have been competed from college all across the US, from 64 to 32, to Sweet 16, to Elite Eight, to the Final Four, and then the championship. And so many are suffering from sports withdrawal 
Uh, but nevertheless, let's talk about it. Okay, we can relate, some of us. So today I want to talk about the final four on the way to the final destination called championship. Several years ago, the USA Today talked about the keys to victory in 2019. 2019, nothing changed. Uh, it's the same keys to uh, victory. I Googled keys to victory for final four victory and it answered me on so many sites. Each team had keys to their own victory. And if you're going to win in this thing called life and Christianity, you need to know what's important and what's your key to unlocking the door to your victory. Uh, when you get to the place where you have worked so hard to get to a destination and you drive, you fly, you walk, uh, catch a taxi and you arrive and find the door is locked and that you can't get in. Uh huh. Um, so, so I followed the map. I put the right uh, information in the GPS. I paid all the tolls along the way. Uh, and yet at that final destination, I can't get in. I can't get into the door. Uh, there's no trophy. I don't get no ring. I don't get no certificate. You know how many people have gone through life doing seemingly all the right things all the right things um, and, and gone through the emotions, sat in the right positions and get to heaven and they knock and Jesus says, be gone because I don't know you. Because I, I don't know you. Uh, somewhere along our route, we never discovered the keys. We can't get into our cars with the house key. And I have a key to our storage unit that can't open the gate to the pool. Uh, there isn't any, uh, uh, any master key in the process of a life. You sometimes have to do something different, say something different. I need you to talk back at me. Hi, Gary Woodson, how you doing? Um, what you may have done last year was good. <laughs> that worked for you back then, but that's not what's going to work on this next leg of your, of your journey. So um, now when Jesus came into the parts, let's talk about Jesus a little bit. When Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, who do men say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, uh, some Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but who do you say that I am? Who, who do you say uh, that, that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon uh, Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say unto thee that, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I've been happy to say that that uh, for a while in these last in this last season. Uh, he built his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. I'm here to tell somebody that. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's found in Matthews chapter 16, verse uh, 13 through 19. That was the American Standard Version that I was reading from. Uh, one of the keys, first of all, uh, is through everything the disciples saw him do on earth. Who do men say that I am? Who do you, uh, you on, on Facebook Live, on whatever. How you doing, Peyton? Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, who do you say that I am? I, I, don't, I don't care what your mama thinks that he is. I, I don't care what grandma said that he was or, or, or deacon or, or the pastor. Who do you say uh, that he is? You have to answer for yourself. So the number one key is basically knowing who Jesus is and who is he to you. Who is he to you? Do you have a relationship with him right now? Do you Can you call him any time of the day and any time of the night and that he responds? Because uh, people in relationships don't ignore each other. They respond to each other in the time of crisis, in the time of joy, in the time of all of those things. We respond to each other. And, 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 and this is the, the second part of that is let the spirit of God give you revelation who he is to you. 
Okay, some of them, some of you, he's your savior. Others, he's your provider. He's your healer. He's your banner. He's your victory in the midst of a battle. Who is he to you? And be, be a rock. Here's another thing. You got to be a rock. Be solid in what you believe. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Stop letting people convince you of what you already know about the Father, about you already know about Jesus dying and his resurrection power. How you doing, baby? Um, know the power of binding and loosen. We don't teach that enough in church. We talk about it. We pray it. I bind that thing in the name of Jesus. I bind sickness and I loose healing. I bind hatred and I loose love. I bind uh, 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 confusion and I lose peace. But we don't understand that we each have that in our mouth. We have the ability to bind and loose on earth. Well, someone is asking, Pastor Frieda, what does this have to do with Resurrection Day Sunday? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, I did not forget because uh, this is the day that we celebrate the death burial and resurrection of our Lord. I'm, uh, 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 no, I, I didn't forget what I was talking about, but every time I hear how Jesus arose, I think how it came down to being able to process through all of his pain in the ground and, 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 and uh, how he walked up uh, Golgotha the hill, all of his humiliation. He had to process through rejection to get to his fin final destination. He walked up Golgotha with a blood drenched robe and a crown of thorns on his hair carrying a cross that they would plant in the ground and hang him on. But that cross wasn't his final destination. Amen. Some of us walk around with, and I love a good cross piece of jewelry, but I learned to take Jesus off of the cross. Give me just the cross because Jesus ain't on the cross no more because that wasn't his final destination. Uh, there are those who have been verbally beaten, physically beaten. You've been mocked. Uh, you've been talked about. You've been called everything but a true child of God. You've been rejected and scorned, but that's not how the story ends. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Uh, but it was not his final destination. We need to understand that some of the stuff we have walked through wasn't uh, meant to hold you captive. Uh, some of us are captive in our old stuff. That thing that has you bound, you think that there's no way that I can get out of that thing. That's not your final destination. Uh, we, we, we needed to understand that some of the stuff uh, that, that has you, you weren't set up, you, you, you weren't supposed to set up camp in that place. I don't care if you were depressed, you weren't supposed to set up camp in the camp of depression. You weren't supposed to set up camp in the camp of I don't got no money. You weren't supposed to set up camp in the dry wilderness. You weren't the children of Israel came in, into the wilderness, but that was not their final destination. Matter of fact, they stayed in that wilderness for 40 years because they didn't understand that they weren't supposed to set up camp over there. They were just passing through. Somebody say, I'm just passing through this stuff. Whatever you're going through right now, know that you're just passing through. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Um, uh, you, you weren't set up, but it was a part of your journey. And in order to break through, you have to literally push your way through. Pray your way through until you break through. The word breakthrough starts with the word breaking, but here's the thing. None of us want to be broken. None of us want to feel the pain of breakthrough, but in order to get through to the other side, something's got to break. On Calvary, Jesus decided to die. He decided to die. Hallelujah. He decided to give up the ghost. He decided when it was finished. Uh, you have to make a decision. When is it going to be over? When is it going to be finished? You have to get to a place in your wounded, pained self when I'm going to lay down and die to that whole situation. Listen, but here's the good news. Death wasn't his final destination and neither is it yours. If death was it, then why uh, why live right now? Why? Why? We would have nothing to believe. It was not his final destination. What can you learn uh, 
uh, what, what you learn to die to doesn't mean that it's over. It's just the beginning. So top, tap your husband, your sister, your child, grab them by the toe and, and, and let them know that, that, that we're not in this to stay, that we're coming out of that thing. It's just the beginning. And when you stop being so stubborn, I'm talking to somebody right now, when you stop being so stubborn, so self-righteous, so prideful, and you're always right, never wrong, when you finally let your ego die, then you win. Hallelujah. How many wants to be a winner? Yeah, uh, we all want to be winners. And when we get done with that, oh, that seems upside down, but the kingdom of God is upside down. The kingdom of God is upside down. They took my Lord's body and they took, they took him. I'm sorry. They, they took my Lord's body and they, they put him in the tomb, uh, in a borrowed tomb at that. Here's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And he's put it, being put in a borrowed tomb. Why? He didn't need his own. Because he was coming out. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust in that grave. They anointed his body. Um, uh, they took it down. They, 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 they anointed his body for burial. But that, my friends, was not his final destination. Back then, they had tombs. They didn't just open up a plot six feet deep. We are now, we are now either cremated, our bodies that we leave behind are put into this big furnace, burned so that we become ashes. Or we are carefully painted, positioned, and put in a casket, lowered into the ground, covered with dirt, and some kind of a mark that reminds people that we even existed. We can identify with the death process, but that was not his final destination. We've been buried by our problems, uh, dirt thrown on our faces, given up for dead. We've been burned, but we're still here because the per that, that perfect processional was not our final destination. We have a championship to win. Tell your neighbor, get up. We got a championship to win. We got hope. Uh, yes, we do. Um, Jesus laid in the grave for three days. That's the, that's the resurrection day story. He laid in the grave for three days, but he was about the championship in his final four on his way to his final destination. Can I tell you what the final four was? Who the final four was competing on his way to destination in the last days with Jesus? Four competitors. Yeah, there was four competitors. Number one was the cross. If you're taking notes, number one was the cross was a competitor. Number two was the grave was a competitor. Number three, Satan uh, was a competitor. And number four, Jesus the Christ. Rock. Da -da -da, da -da -da. This is the supposed underdog. I love the underdog. I think it was 2015, one of those years when UConn became the underdog and took the championship. I don't know if y'all uh, watched that, but I was so excited for the underdog. And sometimes the underdog isn't always right, but I'm just like an underdog fighter because I've been under the dog. I've been underneath things uh, that, that I could not I understand. And somebody by the name of Jesus came and rescued me. And so because he did that for me, I try to reach out and do that for the others. So yes, thank you, Minister uh, Reverend Shanique. The cross, the grave, Satan and Jesus. These are the four competitors. Uh, but here's what happened. He eliminated the cross. <laughs> Hallelujah. He eliminated the cross by simply saying, it is finished. Uh, look at your situation and say, okay, it's done. It is finished finished. It is finished. Uh, uh, I don't have to do you no more. Uh, and, and some of us, we're afraid to tell somebody that I don't do you no more because what if, what if I have regrets? What, what if I have to come back and, and get that thing? No, mm -hmm. you need to tell that thing. I don't do you no more. And, that, and then number two, he eliminated the grave. He eliminated the grave because why? Because the grave could not hold you, hold him. And I'm here to tell you that the grave cannot hold you either. The grave, hallelujah, that dark place, that place where you can't seem to breathe, that dark place where nothing seems to be happening. Oh my God, I was thinking about even on Saturday night, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. Well, I didn't go to bed actually. And I'm, I'm sitting and I went to, go to the little girl's room and I was in there and I was like, okay, God, 
where, where, where would you be in this process? What's going on in that grave? And the answer was nothing. Nothing was going on in the grave right then because it had to appear as if he was dead. Hallelujah. He may not come on day number one. I'm here to tell somebody. He may not come on day number two. Hallelujah. And early on day number three, even right before the break of dawn, it seems like you're on your 11th hour and 58 minutes. Some of y'all with your bills right now and the scenarios that you're going right now, it's like my rent was due on April 1st. My mortgage was due. I get a grace period of seven days. My seven days is up, but I'm here to tell you in that grave, hallelujah, it's just a competitor for your life. It's just to steal your testimony. It's just to take you out and distract you from your purpose because I came to tell somebody that you are a champion. In Revelations, uh, Jesus said, I'm alive forever because I have the keys to death and the grave. He had what it took to conquer all of his opponents on his way to his final destination. And because we have some the same parent as Jesus, here, hear me now, uh, we have access to the same house that he had. Your parents wouldn't give you one key to the house, your brother a different key to the house, your sister another key that, that wouldn't give you, uh, that, that doesn't give access to the house, which your parents prepared for you, bought for you, rented for you, uh, for you to sleep in and eat in. No, you all got the same key. The parent bought the house. You didn't have to pay a dime, but you had access to get into that house. When Jesus got the keys, listen, we were given the same keys. Glory to God. I'm going to make myself shout up in here. When he went into the grave and he set the captives free and took the keys from Satan, he made copies of those keys. Hallelujah. And he passed them out to you and you and you and you. And we all got access to the same final destination. We were all given the right keys to the house to get in. I remember being introduced to the final destination series by my uh, late son, Robbie, and his wife. And it was a thriller that followed the story of, of a bunch of young people who had escaped death, death once, but they couldn't outrun death forever. Um, uh, once, once their fate was fixed to death, no matter how they tried to delay it, it was inevitable. Uh, one by one, they were picked off by death in the most seemingly coincidental situations. I don't know, I mean, they made me watch one after another. It got a little addicting and I started watching, they had to be in a certain spot in an exact timing or in order for their deaths to happen. It would show every minute leading up to their death and just fixated on them. And you may have escaped me once, but I'm going to track you down. Hallelujah. That's what was going on with them. You may have got away with me once, but I'm going to find you. I'm going to track you down and you shall um, uh, be taken out of here. Well, when, when last week, last week, we, we did talk about some things about the tomb and the grave, but, and the things, sometimes the things that we wrestle with, go back and I think Good Friday or, or the last Sunday or whatever, uh, find us on YouTube. Amen. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, you may have escaped one thing, but, but nevertheless, the things that you wrestle with, there's no tied games when it comes to the championship. Either one wins or one loses. There are too many indicators in the word where it tells us to choose. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye this day uh, God or the world system because the world system is scaring some of y'all. The world system is making you bow. It may make you compromise to something, especially in this season. But some of us have compromised when it came to your virtue. Some of us have compromised when it come to how you get your money. Some of us have compromised in the things that we've said, the places we've gone, the things that we have done. We have compromised to the world system. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. You're either on the narrow path, hear me, or 
or you're on the wide path. You're either gathering or you're scattering. You're either hot or you're cold. It's heaven or hell. There's no even Stephen. One has to win the spirit or the flesh. What is winning in your life right now? Only one. Definition of a champion? I'm almost done. Hallelujah. A person who has defeated or surpassed all of their rivals in competition, especially in sports. Uh, a champion doesn't necessarily have to look like a champion. I may not look like a champion, but I've won some battles, y'all. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you may not look like the traditional champion, but I'm here to say you are a champion. You are a winner. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are who God says that you are. A champion doesn't necessarily have to look like a champion. They just win. They, they just win. You don't have to look like Rocky to be a champion. I've called the simple to confuse and confound the things of the wise. Little David came and, and killed a giant with five stones. And in the it, it was in the scriptures and they described Jesus as this. Who believes that we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? <laughs> uh, the servant grew up before God. He was a scrawny seedling, seedling, a scrubby plant in parched field. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. Uh, I'm reading from the Message Bible, uh, uh, Isaiah 53, 1 and 10, if you want to follow me. He was looked down on and passed over. How many have been looked down on and, and passed over? Oh, God, I've been passed over many, many a day, hallelujah, from childhood, but I know who I am. You got to know who you are in Jesus' name. But this is, we're talking about Jesus here in Isaiah. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down upon him, thought he was scum, but the fact is it was our pains that he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he bought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures, but it was our sins uh, that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins, he took the punishment, and that made us whole. And through his bruises, we get healed. Hallelujah! Through his bruises, we get healed. We're all like sheep who have wandered off and gotten lost. I'm, I'm still in Isaiah 53, y'all, in the message uh, translation. We've all done things our own way, uh, uh, gone our own way, and God has piled all our sins, everything that we've done wrong, every jacked up thing that we did on him. They put him on him. He was beaten. He was tortured, but he never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. Oh, uh, yeah. He never said a, a mumbling word about anything like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared. He took it all in silence. How many of you have taken it all in silence? The things that you've gone through, you just shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Because you knew that God had a greater purpose for you. We need to learn how to shut your mouth and let God do what he is doing. Um, back to Isaiah 53, uh, uh, it, like a lamb taken to slaughter, like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and he was let off. And did anybody really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own war welfare, beaten bloody for the sins of his people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with a rich man. And even though he had never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true, still it was what God God had in mind all along. Oh my God. Oh, I love reading this. I love the message translation, how this breaks down. Um, it's still, it's what God had in mind all along. To crush him? Oh, all along? Oh, to put me through? God, you, 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 you meant for me to go through this? Oh God, you ordered my steps in all of my pain, in all of my misery, in all of my tears, and all of the things. God, you ordered my steps this way. Absolutely, dear child. Still, the plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and more life. And God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not what you look like. But, but many of us have been defined by our circumstances and what looks like 
horrible and tragic situations, our environment and the things that we've tripped through, fell through, didn't meet up to, cried through, horrified through, does in no way suggest that you aren't built like a champion. I don't care. Sometimes you broke down and you wept. Good morning, Sister Leslie. You broke down and you wept and you just like, oh, I'm so saved after all. Oh God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Even Jesus wept. Even Jesus wept. I'm coming up to my older son's uh, birthday. It would be his birthday on the 18th, and he was taken way too young, and, and, and people really wanted to see me fall out. And I, 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 I decided to be a leader, and I would fall out, but I would fall out in my bathroom. I would fall out in my bedroom. I would fall out when there was just nobody but me and my husband. But for such a time as this, hallelujah, God kept me. I didn't think I would get through that place. I didn't I didn't think I would get through some of the craziness that has happened in my life, but I'm standing here today a champion because death could not keep me down. And I'm here to say that to somebody else. Also, the death can't keep you. The very evidence that you're still standing, still praising, still making it says otherwise. The fact that you can still lift your hands and say that I may be carrying the weight of the universe on my shoulders, but I still find strength to raise my hands. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are just conquerors, but it says that we are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're bigger than that. Hallelujah. We're more than conquerors. Don't count me out because I'm broken, y'all. <laughs> because that's when I'm weak. That's when I'm strong. You, When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. And you had your best physical fight when you were so mad and hurt and you had to push back the tears so that you can start swinging. You know, that's when it was, when it was, it was like when the enemy thought he had you back up against the wall and your feelings was hurt and your emotions was all jacked up. But then you rose up off of that wall, you walked, rose up out of that corner and the devil was in flight. He was afraid because it was like, who is this? She was camouflaged. It was camouflaged. I never seen this side of them before. I thought they were dead. I, I had given them up. I just knew I had did my job. Same way he thought about Jesus in the grave, thought he had conquered our savior. Hallelujah. Are we glad for a savior today that got up out of his circumstance, got up out of his, his tomb, got up out of his darkness, got up out of his confinement. Get up, get up, get up, get up. I'm saying to somebody, get up this morning. In the gospels, the disciples may give different views of points of their time with Jesus and all of them came to one conclusion. He was laid in the tomb. This is the, the resurrection story. There was a stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. It looked really bad for Jesus. It looked bad when one of his buddies, Judas, betrayed him. Have you ever had someone you rode with, ate with, slept with, betray you? publicly. Uh, oh, 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 that's bad. They, they arrested him. Listen, anytime the police come and slap those cuffs on you, that's a bad situation. Even if you get bailed out, that's a bad situation that you'll never believe. It's bad when they begin to mock him. It looks bad because they didn't do it behind his back, but they did it in his face. After Palm Sunday, they were throwing down their coats and palms and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Um, uh, it looked bad. It looked bad. Jesus may have looked like he was a wimp. His situation really looked out of control. But let me tell you about a real champion. Are you still here? Let me tell you what about a real champion. Uh, real champions know when it's time to raise up. Hallelujah. Somebody say raise up. Yeah, real champions know when it's time to get up. Uh, real champions understand when they're able to take their opponent, but they choose not to because it just ain't my time. It's not my time, ah, but the time shall come. Yes, it shall. Real champions know that there is a time um, and an arena for your victory. There is an arena and there is a time for your victory. You just hold on. It seems like three days is a long time. Some of you, your three days was three years, 
30 years, whatever it may be. Um, but know that you got to, there's a specific time for you to raise up. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Real champion knows when. Tell your neighbor, my time to raise up is coming soon. Hallelujah. Will the real champions raise up? Yeah. Send the praise up and it's going to be done openly God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display of them publicly example of them in triumphing over them in him in it. and that was in Colossians chapter 2 15 and that's the amplified champs translation uh, Colossians 2 10 through 15 in the King James and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power and whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hand in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and trespassing, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly listen that thing that god got it looks like you're buried it looks like it's dark you're embarrassed you feel like a failure but when god brings you back hallelujah it's going to be done openly there were some things that were done in secret but when god decides to bring you back because he has to get glory out of that thing it's going to be done openly yes indeed it shall champions know how to take a licking and still keep on ticking champions don't always win on their home court ah that's what we always think that they should out oh, my warriors my poor warriors they were really struggling they were even losing on their home court you don't always win on your home court uh, but they know how to win before a booing crowd and every critic has counted you out championships are always the number one seed but they're the number seven seed at times uh, i go back to yukon they hung jesus high and they stretched him wide he hung his head for me he died he died on that old rugged cross on a hill far away hallelujah stood that old rugged cross they laid him in the tomb and to the onlookers he laid there for three days to onlookers it appeared he was defeated but a champion uh, knows how to lay there until it's time ain't that rough y'all to lay there until it's time you gotta lay there and shut your mouth just lay there and play dead lay there i don't care what your enemy got to say about you you better lay there until it's your time to raise up he laid there three days. He was conquering death, laying there. Don't think because I've been laying here looking dead that God's not doing a work in me because I'm about to raise up. I'm looking at you even right now and it looks like you're laying there dead. It uh, looks like no, no life is about you. Doesn't look like you are going any place. Doesn't look like your ministry is prospering. Doesn't look like you may ever get your job back. Doesn't look like you got anything going Going on for you. But I'm here to say there is a time and a season that God is going to raise you up. He's going to pull you up. But in the meantime, lay there. Hallelujah. Lay there and stay there until God calls your name. And when he calls your name, Lazarus, come forth. Cynthia, come forth. Leslie, come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Uh, you're going to know it because all of a sudden you're going to feel that raise up in your spirit. Oh, you're going to feel that get up in your spirit. And everybody's going to be confused when you come up out of that dark space, when you come up out of that silence, when you come up out of the wilderness, when you come up out of your grief, and when you come up out of your mourning. Oh, God's going to raise you up. You better raise up. Hallelujah. But know how to stay until it's time and in the meantime pray uh, don't focus on on the taunts amen god is working behind, because there is going to be some taunts uh reverend Shinnick. there's going to be some taunts there's going to be some people that say oh you said i thought you said you were the king of kings i thought you said you were god i thought you said you was this uh uh, uh king of the jews uh, if you be this then you do that 
You don't have to respond. You don't have to respond to the enemy. That's how the enemy has got you out of, from under the blood covering. That's how he's got you out because you, you were listening to the taunts. You were listening to the people. He could have come down from the grave. He could have come down. He could have come down and smoked them all. But he is on a mission. He was born to die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he wasn't even, even born to die and stay there. He was born to get up. Hallelujah. God raised him up with all power in his hands. Praise God. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, there is a name I love to hear, I love to sing, it's worth, yeah, it sounds like music in my ear, it's the sweetest name I know, <laughs> oh how I love Jesus, I get it about see I'm the most Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, see, you can't tell me to speak in, not speak in tongues in your church. I'm in my own church. Because he first loved me. That's my weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love at the cross, at the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Praise him, Eva. And now I am happy all the day. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, that's an assurance, okay. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. It's for you, Pastor Jim. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his love. This is my story. This is my song, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long hallelujah and the blood songs hallelujah 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 thank you all for tuning in i ask that you share it and uh just be encouraged on today we all got a word from the lord hallelujah what are you doing to help the body of christ in this time of crisis what are you doing with the gift that God has given you. Uh, I'm getting on here as often as I can. Uh, I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do in the last, and it may not look like what I thought it was gonna look like when I moved to Florida, but for such a time as this, I laid dead in the grave. It looked like I was dead. Hallelujah, they mocked me. Oh God, they mocked me. Pastor June, they mocked me and they scorned me. And they were setting up to see me to fail. But up from the grave I rose with a mighty heart for Brian Boy's foes. <laughs> I love that he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Sing a blood song today. He walks with me and talks with me. I miss 6 a.m. sunrise service, RDK. Oh, yeah, away he lives. 
dirt on your face. They have, may have put you out. They have, may have thought that you're finished. You're washed up, dried up. But for such a time as this, God is raising up real warriors. He's raising up champions and you're one of them. Yeah, I come to tell somebody, you're one of God's champions. Be encouraged, my friend. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. I love you. I need you to survive. God, we thank you for this present time. We thank you for a special moment, Lord God, where we can be inspired by your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for your encouragement that lets us know that, Lord God, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning, oh God. And we may not understand what morning is, oh God, but we know that morning is coming, just like Sunday's coming after Saturday and Saturday's coming after Friday. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to know that you are on your way, and Lord God, that nothing has gotten past you. God, we pray for each and every one that is on this line, even on this morning, oh God. We pray for each one of their needs, Lord Jesus, and they're all different, but we bring them all to you, Lord God, because you're a big enough God who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above anything we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Lord, stir up the power that is within us, Lord God, to help stir it up. Lord God, help us to stir up that thing that has been planted in us for such a time as this. Some of us have never seen a pulpit. Some of us has never uh, sang on a praise team. Some of us has never, but for such a time as this, you're raising up some soldiers that I ask, Lord God, that you help them come through that dark place, Lord God. Help come through financial disparity. Help come through their grief, oh God. Help come through the sickness, Lord God, that is trying to take our nation out, Lord God. In the name name of Jesus, we bind it, Lord God, we, we cut, oh, now we bind it, we bind that disease that would try to take out our family members, our neighbors, and our nation, God, in the name of Jesus, and we ask that you loose an antidote, that you loose healing, that, Lord God, when we begin to humble ourselves, you would loose healing, when we begin to seek your face, you would loose healing, that when we would begin to pray, you would loose healing in the land, God, hallelujah, Lord God, that it may be a testimony that you are still a great God and you sit on a throne, Lord Jesus. But in the meantime, in between time, Lord God, we place the blood on our mantles, Lord God, that death has to pass over. Thank you for the Passover, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you didn't take us out last night. Thank you in Jesus' name. I glorify you and give you glory, Lord God. I thank you for the blood that will never lose its power, Lord God. I thank you for each one that is assembled on this line, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that this goes out to many people, that they they may be encouraged on this day that there is to know that there is still a champion in there. You will always be our champion, Lord. You will always be our hero. You will always be the big L, Lord. You will be always be the big G, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, as we produce after our own kind. That's after you, God. Lord God, we ask that you keep us, save us, heal us, love us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I love you all. Thanks for staying on. I mean, it's just me. But we'll be back next Sunday, and we, we, we may be trying to do some Bible studies and some Sunday school and all that, because I know people miss Sunday school and people miss, um, but I'm just doing my part. You got to do your part. Do your part. Do your thing. It just takes a few minutes of preparation. It just takes a few minutes to do it. I love you too, baby. I love you too, Ladybug. I'm telling you, uh, you all... Uh, uh, be stay encouraged over there. Watch out for each other. I can't hug all of you, but it's a great big cyber hug coming your way. And great big kisses. I love you all. Be encouraged. Take care. I'll see you next time.